Foster Brothers Marine presents Countdown to the Walleye Opener with Steve Finanz. Hey guys, welcome to Foster Brothers Countdown to Opener. Our goal tonight is to get you ready for opener. We've got some great content coming up for the next hour. And get this, we're going to give away some great prizes. So like, comment, and share the show and you're really going to have have a great time now hey chad uh i don't know about you but i don't know if there was a more beautiful day this spring than today it was amazing wasn't it oh absolutely perfect 70 degrees here and and i, I tell you i took a little run up north uh, of here ways and uh, about every other vehicle was pulling a boat steve so people are itching and ready to get out there and get after them so well the good news stuff. is we've Hey, Chad, we've got a great show tonight. We're going to have a couple walleye pros on board. Mark Kortz is a Skeeter Berkeley pro. He's actually out in Ohio uh, participating in the National Walleye Tournament uh, this weekend. He's going to be coming on board a few minutes. Uh, Eric Neg is going to come on board. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a spinner rigs with him. We've got Adam Belke, service manager at Foster Brother Marine. We're going to go into lithium batteries. So if you have any questions on lithium, feel free to uh, ask Adam, and he can answer questions on whether you should go to lead acid or, you know, maybe uh, invest in lithium and we see what's happening. Then Gary Klingler, service manager at Foster Brothers, is going to stop by. He's going to talk about two dynamite Skeeter boats in that 20-foot class. So if you're looking for a new walleye boat, uh, Gary's going to highlight uh, a couple of the new Skeeter models that are absolutely incredible. And then Michelle Morey, president of WAM, Women Anglers of Minnesota, is going to come on board and talk about a few promotions for women uh, uh, this year for opener. And uh, if you want to fish free, stick around. Michelle's going to tell you a little bit more about that. So it should be kind of fun. But hey, Chad, before we get started with uh, Mr. Quartz, uh, we got some prizes tonight for everybody that's tuning in. Yeah, absolutely. So get involved, everybody. You just click and comment, like, and we've got some prizes to give away. Um, if you ask any questions as well, anything like that, uh, we want you to hang around to the end of the show. Well, first prize, a couple prizes we're going to give away the new two new fantastic baits, the new Berkeley Credge and the Berkeley Finisher. And Steve, I know you've had some experience with that finisher and uh, tell us about it a little bit. You know, that finisher, Chad, is one of those baits that uh, it fishes. <laughs> it's so you can fish it in so many different ways. It's got a very erratic fall. It's triggering stikes. Believe it or not, I've been actually using it a lot uh, in Montana, catching big brown trout on it. But I also know it's a dynamite walleye bait and it's really going well. And that credge, I mean, I don't even know if you can get a hold of one right now. They're so popular. It's really designed with that upturned bill to uh, trigger fish, and but fishing uh, with a forward facing sonar so you can keep that bait at the level of the fish. And uh, we'll talk to Quartz a little bit more about that in a second as well. Hey, we got another prize as well, too. You know, you've heard of Onyx if you're a hunter. A lot of guys uh, are uh, big fans of Onyx. It kind of tells you where you're hunting, who owns the land. But the equivalent on the fishing side is this new app from Omnia Fishing. It's called the Premium Pro. And I'll tell you what, I used it all last season with Lake Commandos. It's got different layers of mapping that show things like wind direction. It's going to tell you where the wind's going to be coming from and the speed. It'll give you water temperatures, believe it or not, over over the entire lake, water clarity, vegetation, uh, bottom contour, Navionics mapping, weather radar, everything you need to get on fish fast. If you haven't seen the Premium Pro uh, membership, you got to check it out at Omnia Fishing. And if you don't win it tonight, it's a $49 value. You can get it for 50% off by, by going to omniafishing.com and forward slash commando. But I highly recommend it. Check it out. Yeah, All right. Amazing. It's amazing stuff. Hey, our first guest tonight is Mark Quartz. Uh, I've known Mark for many years. He's been the longest term. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Longest term guest on Lake Commandos the last several years, and uh, we've got a running battle. I'm not sure who's leading. I'm sure you're going to tell me uh, in our battles, Mark, going forward. But, hey, you're over in Ohio. You're over on Lake Erie right now for the National Team Walleye uh, the tournament fishing. And I, I understand you got some wind, some wind issues right now. How's it going out there? Yeah, you know, Steve, we've been faced with a lot of big winds this week. Uh, the first day of practice, we actually didn't get out. It was 50-mile-an-hour winds. Um, wow. And then the last two days, it's just been rough. I mean, it, it's big waves, but, you know, that Skeeter 2200 handles it just fine. 
the biggest thing is right now is just trying to find clean water. And, and that's been one of the issues this week is the areas that there is clean water. There's a lot of boats in them and, and pressure here is a big deal. If you can get away from the boats, typically you can find those bigger fish and we're finding nice fish and there's a ton of walleyes in the system right now. There's a great year class that's anywhere from 25 to 27 inches. So just really nice fish. And um, it's just one of those deals. Mother nature um, can make or break this lake really quick. And we'll have a couple days before the tournament that it'll have a chance to filter out. And, and hopefully during the tournament, we get a chance to be able to run around and fight the, find the right water. Hey, Mark, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is, you know, walleye anglers traditionally fish a lot of live bait, but over the next four weeks, you're going to be a guest on the show every week, and we're going to talk about different techniques. One of the things I want to talk to you about this first week is actually fishing soft plastics. Now, I opened on Winnie last year. We found a bunch of fish in, you know, four to five feet of water. Here's a shot of a 25-inch. Uh, that's a 2.8-inch <laughs> power swimmer in the back of the throat of this fish. And we were throwing these things in three to five feet of water. But I want to talk to you a little bit about when do you turn to soft plastics? What are some of the baits you use? And why do you turn to soft plastics versus some of the other baits that are out there, especially on opening weekend? Well, I think, Steve, one of the biggest issues that we're all faced with, number one, is bait transportation. Now, it's really difficult to transport bait um, multiple, you know, areas or and different, you know, ways of transporting them. It just makes it difficult. And number two, you know, the, with the last couple springs we've had up until this year, um, finding good quality bait's been hard to find. And as as people have found out last year, bait was really tough to come by, um, whether it's, you know, a drought or whether it's just high water, certain things really make bait, live bait hard to find. But um, I truly believe that I don't, there's not a bite that I can't go to with artificials that I can't catch them. Plastics have gotten so good, whether we talk about um, gulp, whether we talk about power bait, uh, whether we talk about max scent, all these baits have gotten so good over time that it's absolutely amazing. Um, and the other thing that, that we've been able to do is, is create actions that we haven't had in the past. Baits have gotten a lot softer, gotten a lot more lifelike, we're doing printed images of, you know, live forage, things like that. And it's just changed our industry. And honestly, there's no need for live bait anymore. But before we go into specific baits, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between fish and soft plastics and, and say live bait. And one of the things that I personally fish is I fish them a lot more aggressively. I'm using heavier jig heads. A lot of times if I was going to go to, a, say, an eighth ounce jig, I'm fishing a quarter or even a three three A sounds head. Uh, I'm, I'm making much longer casts. I think some of the advantages that when you find these pods of walleyes up in shallow fish, you know, shallow water, these three to five foot flats, you can cover a lot of, of water. But uh, talk a little bit about your approach with soft, you know, soft plastics versus live bait. Well, I think you're spot on there, Steve, that one of the things you have to do is fish a little bit more aggressive. But there again, we've made baits now that you can be really subtle with and they're just as effective. So um, one of the things though, you know, I mean, right at the beginning of the year, one of the most sought after baits is a spot tail shiner. And, and we've created baits at Berkeley um, that really not only mimic those, but you got to remember how you're fishing them. A lot of times you're snap jigging them. For me personally, I like to use a six, six or a seven foot medium action rod, medium light even, um, and I'm, I'm using monofilament still, you know, eight pound XL. I'm casting that bait a long ways behind the boat and I'm keeping my boat going, you know, anywhere from 0.4 to 0.6. And I'm just snapping that bait. And a lot of times what will happen is those fish will come up and grab that. So that's just one of the techniques I really like to use openings in, you know, the first part of the season, especially in Minnesota. Yep whether we talk about Mille Lacs, whether we talk about Whitney, whether we talk about Leech Lake, all those lakes, you know, where you have cabbage or, or some type of weed growth where it's really sporadic and being able to snap those jigs in those shallows, is just a deadly technique. And, you know, whether we talk about gulp minnows, whether we talk about power bait minnows, um, you know, we came out with some of the new shiner colors last year um, in the gulp. Um, yeah. The, you know, the, um, uh the, the champ the champ minnow here i mean printed you, you know, talked about 
you it looks so up, realistic. But yeah, talking about realistic colored baits, the Champ Minnow is phenomenal. And I use the Champ Swimmer all the time. So those are just two baits that, you know, when we talk about live printed images and uh, yeah, they actually match everything that we fish, whether it's crappies, whether it's bluegills, whether it's smelt, whether it's uh, red tail chubs. Um, I think we have fathead, you know, there's a lot of different baits there that are available to people if you want to match the hatch. So I want to talk specifically about one of my favorite baits, and I know you're a big fan of it as well, but some of the paddle tail baits uh, in the in the Berkeley line, you've got the Champ Swimmer, which is up top, and then the Power Swimmer, Hollow Belly, and the, and the Ripple Shad. But the key on these baits, I think, is really the size of the paddle. And I think a lot of times when you're fishing these baits, the, the, the temptation is the fish too light a jig head and you need to have a head that controls the tail versus the other side and uh, talk a little bit about how you fish these baits yeah so when you when we talk about sizes steve here's what i really equivalent size you know the size of the jig to the depth of water i'm fishing so if i'm fishing you know six foot or less a quarter ounce jig is going to be very adequate for that style of presentation in the weeds um or on any given point you know i'm snap jigging that type of bait um, if I get over that, you know, six foot, then I'm going to a half ounce. If it's that six to 10, 12 foot, I'm going to that half ounce bait. And if we, you know, get any deeper than that, then I'm going to three quarter ounce and don't be afraid of a four inch bait. I mean, these fish are aggressive. And a lot of times when that, that cabbage comes up or coontail or whatever it may be that you're fishing, um, you can cast that in. And, and I like to run it on a, a fire line. Um, I'm typically throwing 14 pound fire line down to a 12 or 14 pound fluorocarbon leader, 100% fluorocarbon trilene leader. And then I'm throwing it on a medium or a medium heavy action rod. And the reason why I'm using that heavy of a rod is because you got to rip it through that cabbage. I want it to contact that cabbage. And a lot of times when, when something disturbs those weeds, that's what triggers those fish to bite. So you're going to cast it way up in there and I'm going to rip it out. And every time I rip it, I'm going to rip it like there's a fish biting it. Because a lot of times what happens is when that fish sees that bait coming through the cabbage, it'll actually pin it down to the bottom and you might not even feel the bite. But when you go to lift up, that fish is there. So you want to make sure that that fish is hooked. But like that Fusion 19 jig head is absolutely yeah. phenomenal for the champ swimmer in either yeah. the half or the three quarter ounce size. And it, don't be afraid of hook sizes. That's one of the things I see a lot of people make mistakes when they're running plastics is they use too small a hook. They're using a number one or a number two, maybe even a one on. I like to use like three out and four out hooks when I'm using these types of plastics. I want that gap. So when that fish grabs it, I can set the hook. This is the four six. I mean, and it looks like a big bait, but when you have a, a 25 inch walleye, it disappears really quickly. But the thing that we talk about is that big paddle tail and you got to be able to control that. Hey, let's move on from paddle tails and talk a little bit about uh, some of the worm patterns. I'm a big fan still of the four inch power worm and the seven inch, uh, some of the ribbon tail worms, but there's some other ones out there too that are, are actually uh, uh, great baits and especially early, early spring bone. and river fishing. Curly bones right there that you just had up on the screen, Steve, is an absolute my favorite in the river systems this time of year, either curly bones or bone fish, um, even the rib worm, they're great baits in the river this time of year. And what I like to do, especially, I mean, there's a lot of people heading down to Red Wing. We're hearing a lot of talk at Red Wing right now. The fish are in that kind of stage where they're spread out. We've got some post-spawn, pre-spawn and some spawning fish. So one of the things you wanna do is really the key to using those types of baits in a river system is matching the current with your jig head. I want that bait to flow downstream. So I'm gonna cast it out at a, a 90 degree angle and I'm gonna fish it downstream, keep it in that strike zone. If those fish are relating to that six foot of water, I'm gonna cast it out and just let the current do the work, but I'm gonna keep lifting up off the bottom and letting it fall real naturally. And you'll know when those fish bite. And there's a couple different lines I like to use when I'm fishing that style of bait. Um, XT Solar is absolutely phenomenal. Either a six or eight pound test. I still like that mono um, or Fireline in a flame green down to a fluorocarbon leader. I love fluorocarbon leaders in that type of situation. 
gives me just a touch of stretch, but I have instant feel of everything that's happening. I can feel every rock and I can pop that bait. And a lot of times, and the reason both of those situations, what I just talked about, the XT Solar and the Flame Green Fireline, it, the reason I like to run those style of lines is because I can actually detect that bite. A lot of times I just see my line hop and I'm able to set the hook instantly. Absolutely. Hey, we got a question in here from uh, Neil Blinker. And the question is, how do you guys work the finisher? Now, I know I fish it fairly aggressively, almost like a, you know, some of the glide baits where you cast all that hit bottom, rip it up, let it fall on a slack or semi slack line, rip it back up. But you, you can work this bait almost like a jerk bait as well, coming, you know, it, working it back and forth on it. But how, how have you found that the finisher has been effective for you? You know, Steve, you said it best earlier on when I was sitting on the sidelines here that the finisher is one of those unique baits that you can fish it however you want it. Um, it has a real erratic action if you want it to just by snapping your rod tip aggressively or you can be real subtle. And it's a bait that you can fish vertical or you can cast. So that's one of the unique things about the finishers. It's a bait that just really pay attention. You know, everybody's used to forward facing sonar now. Pay attention to how the fish are reacting to your bait. Maybe to get them to react to it initially, I have to give it that big initial pop. But after that, I can be real subtle with it. I can kind of judge that fish's, you know, attitude by watching what's happening on my screen. That's awesome. Hey, Mark, we're going to have to let you go. Good luck at the tournament this coming week. Uh, you're going to be back the next three weeks. Now, everybody, our show is Sunday night tonight, but going forward, we're going to move over to Thursday nights. So April 25th, uh, May 2nd and May 9th, just to get in advance. So uh, Mark, follow Mark on the circuit this week and, and coming forward. And if you have questions for him, uh, he'll be available to answer any of your questions within the body of the show. So uh, we appreciate your time, Mark, and uh, good luck at the uh, Good luck at the tournament this week. Hey, thanks, guys. It was a pleasure being on. And, uh, yeah, if anybody has questions, feel free to reach out on my social media pages, Mark Quartz Fishing or Mark Quartz um, on Facebook. But reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer any questions you got. Awesome. All right, we'll see you in a week. Thanks, man. Hey, uh, I really want to uh, thank Mark for coming on board. He, uh, we've got uh, – <laughs> I've really got to know him on Lake Commandos the last several years and uh, dynamite fisherman. He fishes both walleyes and bass and, and really knows his stuff. Hey, one of the things that's been a major change in fishing, particularly for rigging boats uh, and running electronics is, uh, on ice and on the water has been lithium power. Now, a lot of people have been running lithium. A lot of people are thinking about running lithium and, and there's some questions out there. So I'd like to bring Foster Brothers uh, service manager Adam Belke and uh, Adam how are you tonight not too bad how you doing Steve I'm good looks like uh, you still got daylight there oh yeah yeah beautiful day <laughs> yeah I got a chance to get on the river today and uh, fishing was incredible hey you guys can carry a complete line of lithium and and uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the advantage of lithium versus lead acid batteries and so what are some of the things that you've been telling folks you know, we've been uh, we've been running three different types of batteries, you know, not only the lead acid and the lithium, but the AGMs. Um, we really haven't been too brand specific yet. Um, one of the big keys as far as the lithium has come has been able to get your hands on them. Um, over the last three years, we've really seen people going that way. This year has been a big, big turn going to lithium. Um, you know, and in the last 10 days, we've kind of changed brands again because just getting our hands on batteries. Is that right? So I'll, I'll tell you one of the, uh, I know lithium is fairly well because I've been running them myself, but the life expectancy on lithium battery is about 10 years for me and uh, taking control of my lead acid. I'm running about two and a half years. <laughs> I'm terrible at keeping them charged on time. The other advantage is they weigh a lot less than uh, lead acid. They're running about 60% less. That makes your boat uh, a little easier to tow. You're getting a little bit better mileage on there. You, and I, I like the lighter weight, which is which is nice. They charge quickly uh, as well. Usually in a couple, three hours, you probably got full charge after a day on the water. And they don't discharge it. They don't self-discharge as much. But there's some disadvantages as well to lithium. Kind of walk us through a couple of those. Right. Um, you know, as far as uh, we could start, you know, kind of with the motor manufacturers, 
Um, there's not a lot of motor manufacturers out there yet that have uh, given us the green light on uh, using those 100%. Um, don't want to get too much into the naming of some of them and the brands and stuff, but uh, I know there's a couple out there that are compatible with a couple of the motor manufacturers, but uh, not overall kind of staying away from it so far. Um, and then as far as the boats go, um, we've been seeing a little bit of performance differences uh, going from that heavy lead acid or AGM and going into this light uh, light lithium where the holes were designed with these uh, heavier batteries, you know, and breaking the waves. And so kind of seeing a little bit of that. Um, had one customer recently that uh, ended up putting trim tabs on after he did that because the ride was that much different. So always a couple Is things right? to kind of keep your mind on when you're getting into this because it's not a cheap purchase either. Um, you know, you're looking anywhere 600 to a thousand dollars per battery generally. Um, and make sure you're knowing what you're getting and what you're getting as far as a warranty goes on those batteries too. A lot of them, like you said, are a 10 year life expectancy, 10 year warranty, um, type deal. So make sure you're doing your background uh, checks on them. There's some that are out there that are five year warranties. So kind of getting what you're what paying for. One of the things that's different uh, with lithium is you can go to 12 volt power, 24 volt power, and 36 volt power. What, whatever your uh, your uh, customers, you know, how you've been binding the, the different batteries, uh, performance, uh, say, th 36 volt. If you're going with a 36 volt trolling motor, are you seeing longer uh, battery life and things like that? So far, yeah. You know, the the still doing a little research on that. It's been pretty new, two to three years, like I said. So we don't have a lot of data on it yet but uh yeah we've been putting the 36 the 24 the 12s uh, a lot of guys tend to be leaning towards the you know the 312 volts to get uh get into that 36 volt series um one of the things with the the boats now you get into that 17 18 foot boat or even a 19 and guys want to go to that bigger trolling motor there's not a spot for that 24 or that 36 the size size alone you got to watch out for and make sure you have a spot for that battery all right. Hey, uh, every year you get up at the boat wrap and you get in line with the group for opener and there's always somebody there where the boat doesn't start and things. So over the next couple of weeks, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the things you need to do to get ready for your get your boat ready, your trailer ready, your outboard ready for opener. And based on a lot of your years of experience at Foster Brothers, I want to make sure that uh, we can share that experience. So I uh, appreciate you coming on tonight. If you have any questions, guys, or you have any boat uh, maintenance things, reach out to Adam at Foster Brother Marine. Um, I, he helped me keep my boat on the water uh, the last couple of years, and it's been really awesome working with him. So, uh, Adam, thanks for coming on, on tonight. We'll see you. I'm not sure if it's next week or the week after, but I really want to get into details and make sure that once we get to the lake, we don't have any issues with our boat. So we'll be in touch next, uh, next week, man. All, All right, right. Have a great you night. Too. You too. Yeah. You know, one of the uh, – I I can't tell you how frustrating it can be to be sitting at the ramp with a uh, with a dead battery or a, a boat or a motor that won't start and things. So really, uh, you've got a few weeks before opener to get everything up and running. And the good news is with the ice already out, you can get out and chase some crappies or even walleyes in the rivers uh, right now. So it'd be kind of fun. Hey, uh, one of my favorite anglers in the boat over the last several years is Eric Neg. Eric uh, used to work at Berkeley, ended up going to Northland Tackle for many, many years, but he's also a walleye pro who has fished uh, all over the country for trophy walleyes. And one of the things I like about Eric is he's such a passionate spinner fisherman and you get out on the water with him, uh, it's almost a guarantee he's going to be fishing spinners. And I want to talk to him a little bit about, hey, Eric, how are you tonight? I'm good, Steve. How are you? I'm good. Hey, I want to hear the story one more time. I know you were fishing a tournament on Fort Peck and you hooked and landed how big a walleye? Uh, it was the biggest one that I've ever had my hands on. I, I It was 34 inches, uh, probably 14, 15 pounds, I'm guessing. Um, it, the funny thing is, though, Steve, it was in it was in practice for a tournament. Of course it is. <laughs> so it, was, it was like, I had to hide this from this guy. I'm coming around a point. I see a guy coming around the other side of the point. So I turned the boat around, look at this giant fish, and uh, threw it back without any pictures. 
That's that's unbelievable. Now you caught that on a spinner rig and a bottom bouncer. I'm guessing, correct? Yeah, and I only had like 15 feet of line out. I was in five foot of water <laughs> fishing a mud line. So yeah, they they work they work from zero to 50 feet. So take us through some of the basics of spinner fishing. When do you go to spinner fishing? You know, when do you go with spinner rigs? When do you go with a say a bottom bouncer and not a bottom bouncer? Take me, what's the first thing though? Take me through the times when you go to, to a spinner rig and what and how are you rigging these things in terms of bait, um, hook size, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I like to fish spinners when the when the walleyes are spread, spread out. So if or they're not um, you know, loaded up in the spot and you need to cover water. It, it's really a great, great way to cover water. Um, and like I said, you can do it anywhere from in the weeds to really deep. Um, I usually run run the spinners around, I don't know, three weeks after opener. Sometimes opener is a great time to catch them on spinners, but usually, usually about in the, you know, mid early summer, uh, late spring is a good time to move to a spinner rig. So what are some of the things, if, if you're looking at blade style, walk me through maybe your two or three different, uh, your favorite blade, uh, you know, Colorado versus Indiana versus, you know, some of the smiley blades. What, what do you look for in the blades themselves and the sizes that you typically go with on some of the waters, uh, especially in Minnesota? Yeah, certainly. So I think, you know, I believe that the Indiana blade is the, is the most versatile. You can move it fast. You can move it slow. Um, it, it's got a little bit of thump, but it doesn't have too much. Uh, works good in all water colors. I think if, if I'm if I'm fishing in a clear water situation, I really like to use you know a smile blade or a butterfly blade that's a little bit less subtle, doesn't give off so much thump. And then if I'm really in later in the summer, I like to use the Colorado blade because that gives off the most thump. So it, it, it's kind of like the bass spinnerbait guys going from willow leaves to Colorados. Uh, it's the same. It's the same thing. So if you think about it, Colorados give off the most thump. Uh, smiley blades and butterfly blades give off the least. And Indiana's kind of in the middle. What colors are your favorite colors on blades, and what sizes do you typically use? Oh gosh, if if they took all the colors away from me, it would be a, a gold blade. I I, yeah. I I love gold. I love gold, particularly in Minnesota and our in our lakes. Um, in, in clear water, I do like white or you know, sometimes a chartreuse. Um, but but gold, gold, white, and chartreuse would be my top three colors. Size wise, I really like um, early in the season. I like smaller blades. Like a like a size three Colorado, uh, a size two Indiana, um, the smaller smile blades or butterfly blades, and then as I as the summer goes along, then I like to use the bigger blades that create more attraction. In terms of bait, are you running uh, crawlers almost all the time, or are you using other uh, you know minnows or whatever? Uh, what are you tipping them with? Oh gosh, I I use it all. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not a great big fan of crawlers cause I don't like to get dirt all over my boat, but <laughs> I, I do a lot. I do a lot of testing. I, I, I really like to use artificial baits. Um, you know, I grew up fishing with gulp night crawlers. Uh, I, I like an artificial bait that is, that is not round though. I like an artificial bait that is flat, you know, flatter cause it gives a little bit more action. I've been playing yep. with some of, the, some of the TPE materials the last few years. Uh, okay. Stuff like uh, Z-Man or Northland Eye Candy. And, yeah. and that, has been, that has been really good for me. But, you know, a, a gulp night crawler is good. I think, you know, I believe that leeches and minnows are best around the weeds. Um, and I believe night crawlers are best outside the weeds and the mud or the rock because uh, I think that's kind of what the what the walleyes are eating at those times. 
You know, I found that if uh, if I'm getting harassed by by perch or panfish or or gobies in the Great Lakes, a lot of times uh, I'm going to a, 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 a an artificial. I was on Wabe last year with Danny Thompson from Garmin, and uh, we ended up pulling spinner rigs um, off bottom bouncers, and we went with a gulp, a little gulp grub uh, with a single hook, and it was really dynamite. But uh, out on Green Bay one time, I went to a a chartreuse gulp uh, crawler. And as a joke, and the first fish that hit it was a 29 inch walleye. So I was, I was stunned it would even touch something that bright on a on a on a on a bright day. Hey, talk to me a little bit about bottom bouncing. What are some of the weights that you go with, and what are some of the keys to making sure that you're fishing bottom bouncers correctly? Yeah, there, there's the you know the bottom. I always like to call a bottom bouncer a bottom feeler or a bottom toucher. So it, you you. You want to use a bottom bouncer that is heavy enough that you can maintain a 45 degree angle in your line from your rod tip to where it hits the bottom in whatever depth you're in. So I think the most versatile weight for a bottom bouncer is an ounce and a half because that'll work from 10 feet to about 25 feet. If you get over 25 feet, you want to bump up to a, a you know, a two ounce, sometimes a three ounce. And if you go less than 10 feet, sometimes you can get away with a one ounce, but the ounce and a half works uh, less than 10 feet too, because you keep that 45 degree angle. And what that allows, what that allows to happen is your bottom bouncer doesn't lay down. So this is when you get snagged. If it's like this, it's impossible to snag a bottom bouncer. It's really, it's really interesting because, you know, I, I fish spinners all summer long and, and I, if a pike doesn't bite me off or, you know, I, I don't lose one. You, you, you shouldn't lose one if you're using the right weight and keeping the right angle. So the distance between the bottom bouncer and the spinner, how long of a, a leader are you running before you hit to the spinner itself? It depends on, it really depends on the, the terrain and how many snags there is out there. So, the rockier and the snaggier it is, the shorter that I want my lead to be. And I'll run leads that are uh, from the bottom bouncer to, to the bait, uh, sometimes as short as 18 inches. Uh, wow. Longer, though, if I'm fishing in a situation where there's not as many snags and I want that bait to get closer to the bottom. So if you think about it, the longer your leader is, the more your bait's going to fall behind your behind your bottom bouncer. The shorter yep. your leader is, the more it's going to stay straight behind your behind your bottom bouncer. I know it's pretty standard to run, say, ten pound mono to tie your bottom your tie your your spinner rigs. What are you using for line and uh, weight? You know, I I do tie most all my own spinner rigs. Uh, I like a heavier line because it is uh, is more durable. Uh, we have a lot of pike in in northern Minnesota and and uh, you know on Northwest Ontario, and I think I, I think it allows the blades to spin uh, a little more freely because it's stiffer. So if you think about if you think about a limp line, you know that's that's going like this versus a stiff line or like a wire. Yeah, blades the blades will sometimes spin freer. So I'm use I'm actually using a lot of like 15, 17, 20 pound. I use a lot of 20 pound, but big game is a great one to tie on to Berkeley big game line. Um, I'm not a big fan of fluorocarbon though for tying spinner rigs because, because it sinks or what? It sinks. Yeah. 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 So I like the monofilament and I like the heavy monofilament. You know, I don't think the I, I don't think the fish really uh care about the diameter of the of the line because you know you're moving at 0.8 to 1.2 miles an hour so it it you know the attraction is the bait the attraction is the beads and the attraction is the spinner what leads to this question from james moore though it, do you uh, I, I see you held up an orange uh bottom bouncer it does the does the color of the bottom bouncer matter or have you run into that situation at all uh -huh. well I always use lead myself, but I fish with a lot of people, my wife, my family, you know, um, and they all like to use colored bottom bouncer because they think it attracts the fish. Uh, 
I don't. I, I'm a lead guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't care what color it is. I could catch them on on uh, lead or or uh, orange. Okay, I got two more questions. I'm gonna have to let you go. In terms of the main line, are you running any type of a braid, or what are you running for a main line from your reel down to the bottom bouncer? I, I actually like uh, I like twelve pound uh, sensation from Berkeley, um, a twelve pound monofilament line. And I like that line because I get a little bit antsy with with the bite. Um, a lot of people are running a running braided line. Then you have to lighten up your rod action. So if you if you like to use a fast, medium heavy or medium extra fast rod, I would suggest monofilament. If you like to use a slower action rod, I would suggest using braid. Braid, braid's just, I mean, it's wonderful. You can feel everything. You don't get snagged. Um, the the one other key, Steve, that that I would say that helps me a lot with spinner fishing is I love to use a line counter reel. So everybody in the boat can get dialed in to how much line you need to let out if he is gets off in the 25 feet or if he gets into you know 15 feet yeah. if they leave that if they leave that line at the same time as you're going up and down these breaks your bait will not get snagged number one but it'll also be in that zone where the fish want to bite that's awesome hey uh one last question length of the rods are you running a longer rods or what uh, what's your typical rod for your spinner rigs i like a seven to seven and a half foot uh seven and a seven and a half foot rod you know i don't run a lot of long, real long leaders so i don't need those eight and ten foot rods that you have to really get the you know the the blade away from the fish to net it so yeah that's what i like to use is a seven foot uh extra fast um fenwick tech navy from like a hundred years ago <laughs> <laughs> i've got some uh some trolling rods from fenwick that probably 30 years old already. <laughs> I love them for the Great Lakes. Hey, Eric, uh, good luck on opener uh, and uh, really appreciate the information. Good luck on uh, your fishing this year. Keep me posted on your successes and we'll, we'll be in touch, man. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Take care. We'll talk later. Hey, guys, uh, one of the things that I've a uh, big switch for me this past year has been running Skeeter boats. I've been running the WX2200 with a 300 Yamaha. And I have to admit, I was really impressed with the boat uh, this past year. It really handled big water well. It was a fast boat. It was laid out extremely well for a lot of different fishing, not just walleye fishing. And when I fish walleyes, a lot of times I'm not back trolling and things anymore. I do a lot of forward facing sonar where I'm fishing aggressively with uh, talking with Mark, you know, Mark about soft plastics and things. But I wanted to bring in Gary Klingler, uh, who's sales manager at Foster Brothers, to talk a little bit. Hey, Gary, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. You got a little sunburn. You out on the water today? No, just outside all day working. Ah, that sounds like raking or doing something in the garden. So <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it alone on that. <laughs> Hey, uh, Skeeter came out with a, a new boat this year, and I'll tell you, based on the lines that I saw down at the Minneapolis Boat Show, or the Sport Show, actually, uh, that uh, that new 20, uh, 2060F, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that boat? Yeah, that's the new WXR. They did a complete redesign of the hull and the inter interior of that of the old WX2060. They um, changed up the hull. It's a little different angle on the hull the um the biggest note thing you'll notice is how big the uh, front deck is they say it only yes, gained eight percent, but it looks a lot bigger because it's wider farther up before it cuts in and um so it gives if you're doing the forward facing sonar it gives you a lot more room for two guys to be up there um watching the sonar and fishing but you didn't lose any of the cockpit space because the consoles are a little bit skinnier or thinner uh we had one of the 23 models sitting next to the uh, new 2024 in the showroom and the cockpits were almost identical but the front deck was looked bigger because that with the new windshield design everything they were able to thin up the console a little bit and 
came out with a great boat. It's funny, uh, Mark Quartz is not a small guy, and neither am I, but we stood in that front yeah, deck, and there was plenty of room shoulder to shoulder. So I think, uh, you know, on Lake Commandos this year, we're not going to have to fight each other to <laughs> make the cast of the fish that we're seeing on live scope, which, is, which will be kind of fun. Hey, you guys carry uh, Yamaha, you carry Honda, you carry a number of different boat brands, and mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit more about some of the other boats that you carry as well. So we carry Yarcraft, Bass Cat, Sea Arc, Kingfisher um, for our fishing boat lines, along with Skier. Um, Kingfisher makes everything from a multi-species boat all the way up to a 34-foot offshore uh, hardcore fishing rig for the offshore guys. Great for Lake so, of the Woods or Great Lakes. I know you... You guys do a lot of boat testing on Lake Independence, and I know last year I was over there and I see this boat that looked like the size <laughs> of the Ark coming in. Uh, so if, if somebody's looking for a, a great big water boat like uh, Lake Superior, Lake of the Woods, some of that stuff, uh, you guys have those available as well. Some of these big, really, they're almost designed for saltwater fishing. Uh, they're so big, right? That's what they were designed for originally. They were the uh, Pacific Northwest offshore boats. Um, we found out they work great, Lake of the Woods, um, Great Lakes. We got some smaller ones, the 22s and 24-footers are all, all over the state on Leech, Mille Lacs, quite a few on Vermilion, let alone Lake of the Woods. And we got 22 and a 24 and a 34-foot all in stock. If somebody's interested That's in something in March. Yeah. Hey, uh, James Moore uh, had a question on the rod locker length on, on the new 2060 uh, F. Can you can you walk him through that as well? I believe, if my memory serves correct, it's 7.6. Seven, six. But I'm seven, not six. sure. I'm 99% sure. So uh, the one thing that a lot of people don't know about you, Gary, is that you ran a very large, very successful guide service for for many years, particularly on Lake uh, I'm going to talk about a, a lot of different areas. Now mm -hmm. you're working at the dealership. Walk us through what a, what uh, typical questions on a somebody that's looking for a boat and how do you match the boat to the angler? I usually uh, ask a lot of questions about where they're fishing, what type of fishing they like to do, and how many people are typically fishing with them. Um, because if you're only fishing by yourself and you're fishing small lakes, you don't need anything more than probably an 18 foot boat. But if you're fishing with the family, you got three to four people. Typically you're going to want a 20 to 22 foot minimum. Um, if you're two guys, the 19 to 20 foot normally works just fine. Unless you're a Lake of the Woods guy or Leech, Mille Lacs, Vermilion all the time. Just depends on what the answers are and what lakes and type of fishing they're doing. That's one we reason. We had a good question. From you. Yeah. Well, you guys um, carry a, a wide variety of things. Yeah. And Neil, that oh. maximum horsepower on the WXR is uh, 250. And on the 2200, uh, I can tell you it's a 300, um, the F300 Yamaha is what I'm running. And I know some of the guys that are running the 20, uh, some of the other 22 foot boats that are out there that are running the 400. And uh, the, the one thing that I noticed, Gary, is the, the gas, the economy. <laughs> when I'm running head-to-head -head against some of the guys that are running the 400s, they go to the gas tank a lot faster than I do. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I can say that that F300 is actually a very fuel-efficient motor, uh, particularly if you if you run it, uh, you know, at uh, like three-quarter throttle and things, which a lot of times I do when we're carrying camera gear anyway. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. In a lot of situations, you're not going to be all run wide open except once in a great while. And the 300 does a great job pushing those boats. Yeah. So, hey, uh, if somebody wants to talk to you about uh, boats that you got uh, on stock or anything, I know you can go to Foster Brother, fosterbrosmarine.com uh, and check out your inventory. What surprised me is your your uh, the number of skeeters you had this year. <laughs> they say sold near next to nearly every one of them. How many more have you got left in stock? Uh, we have two of the new 2060 uh, Fs, the WXRs. We have two of those. One oh, just came in, and I have one 1910 on the way. We sold all of our 2023s in the last three weeks. 
I think it's we incredible. Sold both in three it's weeks. incredible. Yeah, we're and if somebody to wants to test them. drive them, yeah, you guys have an event. Is it May fifth over at Lord Fletcher's? Uh, yeah, for May 5th. Uh, uh, on water. Yes, May fifth we'll have quite the variety of boats over there. We'll have Skeeters, Yarcrafts, Sea Arcs, Bass Cats, quite a few of the Kingfishers. That's awesome. All right. Hey, if you guys are looking for fishing advice and uh, are looking to buy a boat, uh, why don't you give Gary a call over at Foster Brothers and and uh, I can guarantee you he'll, he won't talk your ear off, but he will share some great information. So Gary, thanks for coming on tonight and uh, we'll see you. I think we got John in, in a couple of weeks as well. So I'll look forward to catching up with you then. Sounds good. Thanks, Steve. Have a good night. All right. We'll, we'll talk later. Yeah, Gary, uh, he's one of those uh, anglers that really understands metro waters probably better than almost anybody. And so if you're looking for uh, some someone that's really experienced in, in uh, fishing and, and matching the right boats, he'd be a good one to talk to. Hey, I'd like to bring on uh, Michelle Morey, uh, president of the Women Anglers of Minnesota. Uh, Michelle and I go way back, and, and uh, we've been in a boat together a few times. And... Uh, you know, one of the, uh, Michelle, how, hi, how are you? Good. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good to see you. I, I think um, one of the major areas of growth in fishing, particularly in ice fishing, but also in open water, is the number of anglers, uh, women anglers that are getting out. And kind of take us through what what is it about fishing that so many women are turning to, um, especially nowadays? Yeah, I don't, I just think that fishing offers something for everybody. For some people, it's, you know, peace on the lake. For others, especially with Wham, we have some competition that people like to do. Um, it's just a great all around uh, pastime. Plus, as some of us get older, I think you're a little older than I am, but your bodies give out. Maybe, no. maybe you're not, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a passion that can last your whole lifetime. So I always think what's not to love about it. So Wham is going to be down at the governor's opener this year. It's down at Lake City. Um, I think what is that? May tenth, May eleventh. Um, yeah. And and this year is uh, there's a a promotion for moms fish free. Can you walk us through that right now? Yeah, actually, the DNR has had this going on for a long time, but uh, moms fish free on Mother's Day weekend every year. This we this year it happens to land on Mother's on fishing opener, but. Uh, we're partnering with the DNR and then student angler organization. And so it's called the Moms Fishing Challenge. And so last year they had 2,400 women. Um, it's run through a Facebook page that's going to be coming out pretty quick. And then during the weekend, if you post a picture of a fish on this Facebook page, then you get entered into a prize drawing. So it's great to see uh, moms and women getting out there and, and giving it a shot. So what are some of the challenges that women face in getting out? I, I know ice fishing is kind of a low entry in terms of you don't need to have a boat. You can just kind of get on the drive on a lake and, uh, you know, cut a hole and go fishing. But what are some of the barriers that women have been facing traditionally in getting involved in open water fishing? Well, I do think, you know, we had one of our board members who just recently said that one of the reasons she didn't join WHAM earlier is because she didn't have a boat. And I think, there is a little perception that you need a boat in order to do well in open water fishing. It certainly helps, but there's so many shore opportunities. Uh, we've got women going down to, you know, some of the barges on the Mississippi to, to fish. Um, when you're a member of our organization, you can, you know, put a, a call out there and say, hey, does anyone have an open seat this weekend? Or if you do have a boat, it's people will say, hey, if anyone wants to go. So, um, I think some of it is just getting out there. One, I think one of the barriers for women though, we talked about this before, is if you are a man, especially in the state of Minnesota where we fish a lot, you likely have other friends or a network of people that like to fish. Um, there was a period before I joined WAM, I was fishing with all my friends' husbands. I mean, my husband likes to fish, but at that time, not as much. And so joining a group like wham gives you a peer group and, and a bunch of people that you can fish with uh, i like it janice's comment here we suck at backing up trailers i do anyway. well, he does have a good point you know, it, that... oh go ahead <laughs> no no i just it, it it's uh it that, that can be a barrier for a number of anglers but you make a good point and 
one of the things that uh, Min Fish really pushed for last year uh, when the legislature had the, the big surplus was uh, shore fishing opportunities. And I know that there's some really dynamite shore fishing opportunities uh, on lakes like, uh, believe it or not, Minnetonka, but a lot of the city lakes and the Mississippi River and things where you really don't need a boat. And and uh, as a kid, I used to wade fish a lot at the Coon Rapids Dam for walleye and, and smallmouth yeah. bass and carp and everything. So there are some opportunities that don't require a boat. But the other thing is, and I know you're a big kayak fisherman, you don't really have to have a 20-foot boat and a 300 oars uh, motor to really get out there. Some of the kayaks and things make it uh, make it a lot more accessible. Hey, talk about some of the other events that you've got going for WAM this year. Yeah, we have some really great educational events coming up. We do, speaking of backing up boats, uh, we have a trailering and boat launching class coming up this Sunday. So we're going to be at um, one of the launches here in Minnetonka. And so that will kind of walk women through what, you know, what you do when you get there, what's the checklist, we'll work on backing up on a corner, you know, backing up straight, all those things. Because to be honest, Steve, I'm still not that great at that either. Just I'm the one that drives the boat on the trailer and Scott's the one that backs it up. But um, so that's, we've got a couple virtual classes, Fishing 101 on uh, gear, the basics of gear. We do have a class, um, it's called Metro Multi-Species Fishing. And it's it's done by Katie Corget. And this is a WAM member who actually won, she's won several WAM virtual tournaments before she had a boat. She did a lot of it from shore. So that's pretty inspirational. Um, well, so if, that, if somebody wants more, yeah, if, if they want more information about those events, uh, where do they find out more information? Yeah, our website, womenanglersmn.com. There you have it. Uh, we have an event page and we've got everything listed. Um, so even if you're not a member, you can see what we have to offer. And that might entice you to, you know, to sign up and join for $30 a year. I think we've got a lot to offer. One of the events that I'm super excited about, though, is our 46th annual open water tournament. So that's going to be on Lake Osakis this year. Um, last year we had between 100 and 120 women come and participate. We give away really? $10,000 wow. in prize money. Yeah, it's a big deal, Steve. It's a big deal. So is, are, do they do your members bring their own boats to fish it, or how does that work? Yeah, you have to have your own boat. Uh, you have to have a, a partner. It is an individual tournament, but you have to have two members in the boat. And then for members that don't have boats, we, we rent pontoons. And so we'll put, we, we get a captain and then we'll put typically five women on the pontoon. And that's pretty cool. A lot of times it's um, people that are newer to the club and they end up making friendships with the other people on the pontoon. And almost every year, somebody from the pontoon will win because we have five different categories. It's a multi-species tournament. So we'll always have a winner from the pontoon boats. That's awesome. Michelle, thanks for coming on tonight. Uh, again, if everybody's looking for more information about uh, getting involved with Women Anglers of Minnesota, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean joining the organization. Maybe you host uh, events or things if you have a resort or something, but go to Women Anglers of Minnesota, uh, mn.com and, yeah. and check it out. So Michelle, thank you for coming on. Uh, good luck on opener. I know uh, that can be a, a great time of year to be on the river. Uh, yeah. I've had some really good fishing down on Lake Pepin that time of year. So good luck uh, on opener. Thanks for coming on, on on tonight. Looking forward to it. And thanks for always supporting WAM. Yeah, sounds great. Hey, Chad, uh, are you, uh, you still back there, dude? I'm here. Have you been picking out uh, any winners for us tonight? Because we need to have someone uh, to to, to win tonight so uh, i want to make sure that we've got a couple things hey I'm and and to... folks before we before we uh chad announces who our winners are uh and he's the one that picks them not me so just so you know um we're gonna we're gonna move this show to thursday nights uh starting april 25th um i sure appreciate everybody checking in um i just had a a text saying that our our, our ad said eight o'clock central I'm not sure what happened there, but we'll make sure that that's cleaned up. And please let your friends know about this. Uh, and if you have questions uh, that you want to get answered uh, from pros like uh, Mark Cords uh, or or Adam or Gary or anybody, um, and including myself, just let us know, and we'll be happy to answer them online. And I, I have to admit, I'm probably more excited about opener this year than uh, 
than I've been in a long, long time. It's just uh, it's time to get on the water and chase some walleyes. Who do we have the winners tonight? Well, let's go with the uh, the, the Berkeley Credge and finisher um, w winners of this evening. There's one yeah. winner, right? <laughs> yeah, one winner. One and winner. Sorry to put a I'm sorry. James Moore, Steve. James Moore did a great job, was very, very uh, active in the conversation, and uh, he is our winner on this uh, on for the baits. All right. Hey, James, what I need you to – oh, and, and the Premium Pro membership? Premium Pro membership. That one goes to the best comment of the night. Janice Ott wins. <laughs> Premium Pro membership. So she can make sure that the ramp is dry. She can check the weather before she goes there, before she has to back the boat in, in the water. That's all. So. awesome. Hey, uh, James and Janice, I need both of you to direct uh, message me uh, with your shipping address. Uh, actually, Janice, all I need is your email, and I'll send you the uh, link and the code for you to uh, – to uh, secure your membership uh, for a, it's a one year deal. And I'll tell you what, you're going to be very impressed with that premium pro. And, and uh, James, I really want to get your thoughts on that finisher and the credge because they were extremely well received by anglers all over the country. Uh, and Berkeley has, has had a couple home runs with those baits. And I think you're going to find they really are deadly on walleyes. I can tell you the first time I threw that finisher out in Montana on the Madison River, I had a 23 inch brown. And the next time I went out, I had a 24. So um, I ha have not fished a bait at all that's been producing like those, like that bait. Uh, so yeah, I think you're really gonna find it uh, effective. So, hey, Chad, uh, what are your plans for opener? Uh, opener, we're gonna stick close to home and uh, up uh, in the Park Rapids area there. I've got the, uh, the old favorite home lake. I like to take my dad out. He's 80, going to be 84 this year. So it's kind of a family wow. tradition for us. And we usually find a few walleyes too. So that's good. Yeah. You send me pictures every year so, and some nice fish. So <laughs> yeah. Hey everybody. Thank us. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, this is our first, uh, our first show uh, with Foster brothers and, uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, if you got any suggestions on the show, let us know. We're going to start tweaking things and uh, get involved with the going forward. But uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, congrats to the winners. And, Chad, thanks for your time tonight. And we will talk to you guys later. Have a good, have a good night. Foster Brothers Marine presents Countdown to the Walleye Opener with Steve Finance.